Hi, I'm Marcia Mason from Rancho Cordova Arts and today I'm going to talk about mixing your own grays and blacks. This is a fun one. What we're going to do is talk about mixing pairs of cool, that's our purples and blues and greens, with warm colors. So these are called mixing complements. Why mix your own? Well, if you use the same pigments in your artwork that you do uh, in the rest of the piece it, to make blacks and grays, then that unifies your piece a lot better than just using one of the carbon blacks, and we'll talk about that a little later. Now, uh, this is not as simple as talking about the other kind of compliments that our artists deal with, and that's visual compliments. Visual complements are pretty straightforward. Uh, you know that uh, for yellow, uh, violet is a complement. You know that for red, green is the complement. And you know that for blue, orange is the complement. But lots of different oranges work with blues to make uh, grays and blacks, for instance. So. Uh, Visual complements are about what you see. It's about light. Now, there's a little more to it in mixing complements, and that's because we're talking about pigments. And your results will also depend on the brand. Uh, I use uh, Daniel Smith and Windsor Newton mostly, a little bit of some other brands here and there, but I like good quality paints. And um, my favorite color wheel that really describes two things, the hue and the chroma or saturation of each of those pigments in watercolor paints. Now, what I like about this is that uh, as you go around the circle, you get different wavelengths, different hues, different colors of light. Yellows, reds, blues, greens, and then, this is the cool part, the, the paints that are on the outside are the brightest, highest saturation, highest chroma paints. And as you, as you get closer and closer to the center, you're getting duller and duller and duller and duller until you get down to the grays and the blacks right in the middle. So this is uh, where I got a lot of the information. Go to handprint.com. They've got a ton of it. Uh, so... Uh, one of the good things about mixing your own paint, too, is that you can get the darkest darks. You can get darks that are darker than black paint that comes out of a tube. So go slowly. Uh, I will put this um, uh, chart that I made at the end of the video so you can take a good long look at it if you like. And uh, let's get going. So I started with yellow and violets. And I used two, uh, I used the ultramarine violet to see if I could get a black. And try as I might, I could not. I got some beautiful um, dark browns and, uh, and actually the cad yellow, uh, uh, the cad lemon uh, was the darkest of these. But in all of these, I didn't really see a black black. So I don't know if it's possible, but... Um, there are some other places that are. Dioxazine violet is a very dark purple to start with. And uh, it is, uh, if you've watched my leaf greens videos, you know that that is a great complement to the uh, sap green and to um, uh, other yellowy greens uh, that you might want to make foliage colors with. Ultramarine is probably the blue I use the most. And uh, I've done a lot of uh, charts with the blue. My favorite uh, black, uh, up until now, because I'm gonna try new stuff, is um, Brick Sienna and French Ultramarine Blue. And uh, this kind of illustrates what I'm talking about, about using the colors that are already in your painting to make blacks. There's quite an array of, of colors here, and um, 
uh, and some beautiful grays that go into the browns and into the blues, warm and cool. Uh, it's very versatile. But I did find out that some of these blacks are um, even a little uh, darker. Uh, the umbers in particular uh, are darker and you can see that these are really some gorgeous grays on the warm and cool side that you can use. Prussian blue, that's an iron particle, uh, gives us our darkest darks in the blues. And that is when you add uh, Venetian red or quinacridone burnt orange to it. Uh, when you tweak that black on either side, you also get some beautiful warm grays and cool grays. This, I made a note, I must have read it somewhere, that this was a favorite combination of, of Winslow Homer. I'm a fan. <laughs> and um, let's see, moving to Thalo Blue. This kind of shows, you gives a good example of how the um, you can use the uh, low chroma reds tend to work a little better than the high chroma reds. And what I mean is, oh, let's put this right side up. Venetian reds down here, it's pretty close to black uh, on as far as saturation goes. It's kind of a dull color. The cad orange is ba -ba -da, out here a little, it's a brighter color obviously but you see it out here, cad orange. And um, this illustrates something that I ran into that I had no idea. When you do mixing complements for your blue colors, you're gonna find that you get either a neutral that's gonna go right to the center here where it's black and you, you're not getting what they call a hue bias. You're not getting a tint of another color in it. It really is black. But a lot of times you're going to get a hue bias of green. And here's one of the high chroma warm pigments that I used. And you can see, I hope you can see, that it really is pretty green here. Uh, and here's the deal. You will either find that it's a true neutral or it will be a green bias or a magenta bias. In your mixes. Here's another magenta bias. Um, and uh, there's a lot of science behind it, but that's how it is. I'm not going to explain it because it's complicated and it takes a long time. But um, this is a good reason why it's uh, read up about it and uh, learn what works for you because you might get some surprises which you like and can use or maybe that wasn't what you intended and it's not going to work. Uh, Thalo Green, the basis for a lot of the uh, convenience green mixtures, makes a very dark black, darker than the black out of the carbon blacks out of a tube with perylene maroon. Uh, one of my favorite mixing colors and one of my least favorite colors right out of the tube. And then here a cad red. Um, again, it's a higher chroma uh, color, warm color, than the perylene maroon. Moving on down to uh, in Danthrone Blue, I always think of this as a, a great basis to make denim color. Uh, when you mix a little black into it. Um, the umber, the uh, raw uh, umber and sienna, uh, isn't it interesting how this lighter color makes just as dark of a black as the this darker mixing complement. And then I, I put down a color that I just picked up, brand new tube, haven't had it before, to see how I could get black with this and Ah, it turns out, just like cobalt blue, you don't really get the darkest darks with it. So there really are some pigments, pigments that you can't get there from here. Uh, now, if you decide that you really have to use black out of a tube, lamp black or ivory black I have here, here's why 
it's it's risky. Uh, when you use a, a black like this out of the tube straight, uh, it's quite opaque and when it dries it reflects light in a way that can make it really stick out from the rest of your colors, the rest of your pigments in a painting, even if you have a lot of darks in it. They just don't quite fit. So if you have to use black, uh, I'd suggest that you mix another color with it so that it at least softens that um, that physical attribute that makes it so jarring in a painting. Um, my advice on this is to go slowly. Uh, if you do get a hue bias like this green, remember that if you add a third color, you can always take it down to the black to adjust it. Um, there are some paints that you can buy out of a tube that are convenience mixtures, pre-mixed. Payne's Gray is one. Neutral Tint is another. You can go to one of these real dark blacks and adjust them from there by adding things to them. Or you can do what I do, and that's read on the tube uh, what, what the combination of of pigments is in that paint and then you can mix your own too but it's it's really not that hard you don't have to go out and buy uh, extra tubes of paint if you want to mix your own with single pigment uh, paints and actually I was caught out a bit because I thought that my cadmium orange was a single single pigment paint I would have expected these pigment numbers this uh, should I expected a PO something uh, pigment orange, but this turns out to be a mixture of pigment yellow 35 and pigment red 108. So uh, it happens to even the people who read labels most of the time. Um, go to handprint.com for more an information on watercolor mixing complements and if you make a painting we'd love to have you post that on our Rancho Cordova Arts Facebook page. We have lots of instructional videos on the Rancho Cordova Arts channel of YouTube and uh, I hope you watch them. This is the 14th video I've made on watercolor. Um, please stay creative and stay curious and stay tuned. Thanks so much.